Thank you, everyone, and thank you to the ECA for inviting me to come speak. I don't know how many people here have even heard of Flow Power. Um, so we're a little bit different. We're an electricity retailer. Um, we service the CNI customers across the NEM. Um, we've grown rapidly. So in the last 18 months, we've grown threefold. Um, but we also have a very different offering. So the business grew out of an energy management business, which focused on demand response. So it's really at the core of everything we do. Um, we started off putting customers on spot pricing, and we built a system to give them SMS messages to power down when prices went up. The business has grown since then, obviously. Um, and then, so we've been around for nine years. We have crazy high retention rate. As soon as you do the education process with a the customer, they get it. The only time ever people leave is in, right at the start, or if you've got employee changes, and we haven't quite picked up on that. So what we prove over and over again is that by avoiding those spot price spikes, um, there's a 30% reduction. Because the reality is the spot price sets the fixed contract market. And so by avoiding it, you're just not paying for that risk. So maybe about six months ago, we got that 30% down to 45 by connecting customers to the signals of renewable generators. So we're offering corporate PPAs across the NEM now. So today I'm going to quickly run through our thoughts on how demand response works and how it doesn't work and, some, and an actual real life activity that happened on January 19th in Victoria. So, Flow Power, we see four roles for it. So firstly, obviously integrating renewable generation. Um, our technology, basically, we have a piece of technology that we install on customer sites and we encourage them to make hay while the sun shines, effectively. So uh, Olam, who is Australia's largest grower of almonds, they've signed on to a corporate PPA with us. They pump and irrigate their orchards when the wind's blowing out of our wind farm, and then they don't. Or if they have to, then they just buy off spot. We can hedge around that. We have an AFSL. We can do all those things, but at the end of the day, we encourage them to soak up that low-cost power. It also obviously manages the price for users. We can get them to a point where they're really comfortable with that outcome. And then probably what the other people on this table are going to talk about is managing the need for new infrastructure. We have customers who participate in things like Critical Peak Program down in Ausnet, um, who obviously have a lot of benefits to their network tariffs. And then building greater reliability in the grid. Grid. So we have some really strong opinions about things like the NEG and the role for wholesale demand response um, and the benefits that that can have for the system more widely. So if you imagine this is what the demand um, market price looks like in a daily schedule, we have customers who are managing the highs. They're getting paid as part of RET and demand response. We're part of the arena program up here in New South Wales for demand response. And then making the most of the lows. So we encourage a user, when we get negative pricing, they're actually getting paid to use power rather than the other way around. So just quickly, I don't know if anyone remembers what they were doing on January 19 down in Victoria, but it was, we had three stinking hot days. Um, and there'd been issues at some of the coal-fired generators. Um, there wasn't much wind. There was a little bit cloudy. It was humid, which is a bit odd for Melbourne and Victoria. But AMO called a demand response event. So we had LOR2. Um, Rote got called. Um, our customers had known that something was foreboding for a while because we, give, we send weekly emails. We do SMS. We try and keep them um, in front of the situation. And they prepared. So we have quarries who put on maintenance shifts. We have um, cool stores who pre-cool. We have all sorts of different people who manage this situation in a way that works for them. So we had two programs, a fast responding 10 minute product, um, and then a longer one for people who hadn't got quite the technology installed. Um, so we have a piece of technology, the KWatch Intelligent Controller, um, which gets installed on the customer site. We can then automatically switch things off, lower things down, 
whatever's required for the site. And probably most importantly, if you've got paddocks and paddocks, it means no one has to drive out to the back of the paddock to turn that off. So with the right information, customers could adapt to the market signals. So this is the outcome. So that orange line is the market price on that day. The green line is our load. So on that day, we had a 50% drop in demand based on demand response activity. Our customers avoided 250 grand worth of spend. Um, that doesn't include the money that they were paid by demand response, but that's money that they weren't paying for. If they had been on a fixed rate contract, there would have been no impact whatsoever and they would never have re received the signal. So for us, Demand response can resolve many of the problems in the market, as I think many of the people on this panel will agree with me. Um, it needs to be carrot-driven. The hardest thing we find is putting a contract in front of a customer and telling them they have to power down when we tell them to. And it doesn't need to be overcomplicated. It's pretty simple. As all these people have said, we've got models for phones, we've got models for everything. We just need to think about it in a way that customers actually <coughs> appreciate whether they're users, residential users, or whether it's a CNI customer. Sorry, I'll say right now, I have customers who Google a new way to buy power, and then they sign up with us. Customers are looking for a better outcome and a better model, and we just need to provide it. So yeah, I will. <laughs>